Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Head over to audibletrial.com slash jumbled and check out their services and get that free 30-day trial and free audiobook. More information coming later on in the episode. But for now, let's all grab our Cheetos bags and our Mountain Dew and let's get nerdy up in this bitch. It's time. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Jumbled, your favorite podcast about nothing. I am the one and only, uh, m- way more talented and attractive Zach. I am Zach's biggest pain in the ass tonight, Johnny. <laughs> you sort of are, man. You what said, do you mean? You know what? But, but to be fair, to be fair, to be fair to you, I wasn't completely ready. Whenever you called me. To be fair to you, to being fair to me, I did bump our our recording time by thirty minutes earlier. So that's true. That but is true. But to be fair to you, to be fair to me, to be fair to you, to be fair to me, right? I did give you twenty minutes notice. Yeah, which, you you did. No, which I... was twice as much time as you needed to get your shit ready. <laughs> all right, all right, bro, calm down. All right, man. <laughs> it's good to see you, Johnny. Uh, Feels like it's been so long, too. man. It has been like two weeks. I mean, we text almost every day, but right. just something about seeing that big, big bearded face looking up at me while you're on your knees that just brings mm-hmm. back fond memories. I mean, happiness. I, I mean, both. <laughs> I'm to be fair right now to myself. I'm not on my knees, so I think you need to. Well, y- it's you hard need to. to tell. You got you a blanket to, on. You need to retract that. Oh yes, I do you have got a your blanket. Shame blanket on. You know, so I. <laughs> I'm completely pantsless from the waist down. I just got done with my uh, with my cam session actually right before we started oh, yeah. recording. How's that going? Uh, it's go- I got like a couple people. They toss me a quarter every now and again. You know. <laughs> hey, it all adds up, man. Yeah, I'm gonna it's buy a, a pack. Qu- you're getting paid a quarter every ten minutes more yeah. for doing something you'd be doing anyways. You know, so it's yeah. it's really a win win. Most people pay me in trident layers. Oh. So. Yeah. Trident layers. Yeah, they pay me in trident layers. It's not. I didn't ask for that, you know, but they still do it. So it's like they're sending you a message. Yeah, but anyway, uh, you said I couldn't do it, so I'm gonna do it. You're talking about the blanket that's covering me right now. I have another blanket that's off to my left. It smells like pure dog shit. I don't know <laughs> what's going on with it right now, but I was covered. I was covered in it initially, and I was like, I gotta throw the thing off to the side. I need to wash it. All that stuff. Uh, but this one actually smells pretty nice. You had a funny story about. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's come clean here. So, <laughs> while Zach was preparing for about ten minutes, uh-huh. and I was waiting for him, uh-huh. we were chatting. And uh-huh. what usually happens is when Zach and I start chatting, we get to some weird topics, as you all know. Yeah. And we burn through some good accidental content. Sure. Um, one which is including what Zach is referring to now, um, which is a story about my dog that I will share, but. I would like to point out that I set up that segue for you, so don't you dare own that. I went down that road. <laughs> you did, yeah. You, you, well, you're just talking about me being uh, whatever. Just continue. Yeah, this yeah, story, yeah, dude. yeah. Whatever. That's two nothing for John tonight. Fact checker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, call out to the imaginary fact checker. I feel like there's there might be like one person out there that's just keeping tabs, you know. Yeah, we're gonna get an email know. every hundred episodes and be like, "All right, shitheads." <laughs> yeah, here's person. your essay of how stupid you are, <laughs> dude. I I hope so. I hope it's like a manifesto of uh, like how stupid we are. I, so. I'm I hey I'm not perfect. I'm happy to admit that, and I'm definitely not the smartest in the world. And I'm okay accepting that sometimes on this podcast I say shit that is wrong or doesn't make sense that's 100 percent true mm-hmm. let's hear about your story all right anyways so back on topic zach was t- getting blankets because he was complaining about being cold mm-hmm. and then he had a packers which rip packers and aaron Rodgers. um what are you talking about dude is he he's still hurt <laughs> aaron Rodgers is hurt yeah no but he's that. supposed so they're doing 
the NFL is doing like a preseason game in Winnipeg and I have some buddies going and it's the Packers against someone else. I can't remember who. Right. And there's a lot of excitement and then there's this big kerfuffle because Aaron Rodgers apparently isn't ready to play any preseason. So now people bought tickets to see the Packers, mostly Aaron Rodgers, and now he's not playing and they're pissed. Well, so that's I mean, all. I this is all hearsay though. I'm just I'm just you know I think I think they're probably just limiting the time that Aaron Rodgers spends on the field in the preseason because okay. honestly, Aaron Rodgers doesn't need preseason. Everyone needs preseason, Zach. Everyone. Maybe maybe a, maybe a few snaps. He hasn't played in a year. You don't think he's got any like ring rust? He's gridiron rust, field rust, <laughs> field mold. Know. Is it field mold? Yeah, dew? that's that's what it dew? is. He's got a little bit of dew. It'll be dew? all right. He's a little dewy. Yeah. Well, I mean, he is a pretty fantastic quarterback, and he's been doing it his entire life, so I'm sure it'll be like riding a bike. But I would willing to be willing to bet that he's doing some kind of practicing. We'll see. Anyway, blanket. Let's get All to right, it. back in classic jumbled fashion. Here we go. <laughs> uh, attempt three, take three, uh, for the blanket story. Yep. Action. Um, so Zach was talking about how this blanket, this Packers blanket, wrist in peace, Aaron Rodgers, is not going to play place preseason because he doesn't believe in practicing. <laughs> And then it smelled like dogs. And I yeah. said, hey, don't you hate when that happens? Because we have two dogs. They're low to the ground because they're corgis. And one is really yeah. shaggy. So they collect a lot of outsideness. So right. they sometimes smell. And then they like to lay on the couch. And sometimes they make things on the couch smell. So we're All constantly right. cleaning our couch and the pillows. And it, I I love my dogs. But, man, yeah. I do so much laundry. Yeah, it's weird, it's, and that's like all dogs. It's like you don't really smell the dog until they like lay on the shit, and you're like, yeah. And then you what? lay on that pillow, and you're like, why does this smell like balls? And <laughs> I now know why. Well, I guess not balls, more like dick, because Gus doesn't have balls. So Gus has developed this this obsession where he we so the way our couch is set up, we have a sectional, and our main window in our living room is a little bit higher than the couch. So in order for mm. the dogs to see out the window, they have to like stand on the couch and then put their back paws or their front paws on the backs. And then they can kind of see over the edge and look out the window. Right. So they do that a lot and they like look around and it's really cute when you come home. Cause you just see two little dumb heads floating in the window, like looking at you <laughs> yeah. so excited. And then, you know, you get to the door as soon as you get close to the door, they don't run to the door until they see you commit to the steps. Mm-hmm. So they will stare at you, you step on the steps and then they book it to the door. And it's really <laughs> cute. Um, anyways, Gus has developed this, love um, obsession fatuation with doing that over top of a pillow so he's just dragging that little red rocket all over <laughs> all of our pillows all the time and there could be eight feet of room for him to do this no yeah. he will go to where the pillow is and if you move the pillow he'll go back towards the pillow like that i don't know what he's got going on if he's like some kind of just exhibitionist feel, yeah, it just feels like, nice just feel, it's nice and cool on the wang. Yeah. While he's looking out the window. Yeah. Checking ro- checking out bitches. Rolling out his lipstick. He's just laying it on the laying it on uh, the pillow, man. Yeah, so all our like our pillows constantly smell like dog dick and now <laughs> always doing laundry. I'm gonna be honest with you. I have no idea what dog dick smells like. Well, but I don't envy you for knowing what that smells like. I'm gonna be real honest with you. Yeah. I know in great detail what dog dick smells, thanks to Gus, um, or how dog dick smells. I should say not what it smells smells like. Um, so when he was a pup, and this is really common with uh, dogs, corgis, who haven't been neutered yet, because mm-hmm. um, they're so low to the ground and he's furry and he was a little puppy. Basically, his wieners drag into the dirt all the time. Right. So he got a penis infection. Okay. Um. And his penis was just spewing goop. <laughs> oh, gross. Like a runny nose. <laughs> and it would get caught in his first. So we bring him to the doctor and he's like, all right, well, we I can give you antibiotics, but like, it's not good for him to take it. There's a, a like a, a home remedy that's really easy to solve this. It'll take a few days. And I was like, okay, well, what is it? If I don't have to give my dog drugs, I won't. Uh, he's like, well, it's a little bit hands on. And I kind of was like, okay, chuckled. And he's like, you got to clean his penis three times a day. And I was like, wait, what? And he's like, yeah, like I said, hands on. But 
<laughs> and uh, so he grabs Gus, who we're very, very lucky that he is like a teddy bear. You, he likes being on his back. Right. So you pick him up. He puts picks him up, puts him on his back on the table, and like gives him a treat. So Gus is like laying on his back, like he's getting a belly rub. And he's like, yeah, yeah, love me. And then the doctor takes his hand, grabs the top of Gus's wiener. Yeah. Pulls down the foreskin sheath. Yeah. And then takes a cloth and is just like rubbing in and around the dick. And he's like, you got to do that three times a day for, you know, the next three to seven days, depending on how long it takes. Right. Um, and, you know, I uh, had to do it. For some reason, my wife wanted nothing to do with it. Uh, for some reason. It sounded like you didn't want anything to do with it. So I, I didn't can imagine. Either, but I, I drew imagine... the short straw. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't remember pulling straws, but I was told I drew the short one. Sure. So, um, and uh, yeah, his his penis was pretty oozy for the first few days. It was really disgusting. Yeah. Um, but it cleaned him up right away. And then we got him um, neutered. And he's never had that issue since. There you go, man. So, uh, cleaning dog dicks, man. Yeah. So I, I know that pungent, pungent odor, um, yeah. quite well, regrettably. Yeah. No, thanks. Uh, and, and that's where belly rub started being called. Do you want a hand job? Which everyone gets really sure. weird when I say that to my dog, but there's a legitimate story behind that. Yeah. Have you said that recently too? Uh, yeah. Every day. I thought I thought like a couple weeks ago you said you wouldn't be able to do that anymore. <laughs> Yet here you are, you're still doing it. Uh yeah, it drives Ali nuts when I do it. <laughs> so that's why you do it. Yes. Got it. Uh which Got is it. a perfect segue into a, a listener question that we had recently gotten. And yes. it comes right from our dear Miss Lacey. Uh she said, What is the most annoying habit habits you have? that drives your spouse or others crazy in great detail obviously <laughs> in great detail oh uh <laughs> well you i don't think, know i, I i'll think, tell you right yeah. now me saying hey gus do you want a hand job and giving a belly rub is definitely one of those things <laughs> <laughs> it's fair I, I would say that's a fair thing to uh to be annoyed by <laughs> um I don't know. I, I I have a hard time uh admitting that I'm anything but perfect. Hmm. So uh. I I don't know. I mean that would probably definitely have to be a uh a Stephanie question. I think she answered something similar to that that I think, you would I think ask. I asked that, yeah. That is so fair. I don't if you guys either. if you guys want that answer and I'm sorry to short change you change you, Lacey. Head back to the episode called "My Podcaster Wife." She mm-hmm. will answer it somewhere in there. I uh, I want to do an episode just with Stephanie, just me and her. Okay, we'll get that. And set you up. can't be in the room. You got to be out, be out with the kids. And I just want to dive deep into the psyche of Zach. Um, <laughs> Sounds good. So another one of my habits that drives Allie nuts um, is the amount of time it takes me to poop. Okay. Which can be extensive. Sure. Um, well, it's all the wiping you do. Well, it's, you know. <laughs> that takes about a third of the time. I don't know. I read emails. I I answer a lot of emails. While so you do time. a lot of no shitting when you're shitting. Yeah. Like sometimes, it, you know, sometimes it takes a while to get going. It really sure. drives her nuts when it's in the morning and mm. I'll do my workout and I won't realize that she has to be at work early. So I'll do my workout and then I'll go and I'll need to take like my 20 minute poop. And she'll be like trying to like get in the shower and be like, uh, no, not right now. <laughs> like you should have scheduled this miss get up anywhere between six and 8 PM every day or 8 AM. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I was like, Jesus Christ. She's falling <laughs> out of control in the sleeping. Yeah, no, no. Ali does love her sleep. <laughs> Um, or when we're about to go out and then I get the nervous poops, I'm like, okay, I got poop. And then it takes me forever. Yeah. The nervous poops. I don't know anything about that. The only thing I do know is that I, sorry, I was far away from my microphone there. So if I got a little closer, that's why, um, I like ever since I got an appendectomy back mm-hmm. in like freshman year at, at a uh, college, like my whole GI system has just been off. Because 
they had to take out like six to seven inches of intestine with so my six to seven inches faster. Yeah, but or that's more frequently. Six, that's six to seven inches of intestine and bacteria and stuff that I don't know has ever uh, fully yeah, fully come back to uh Does, to where it should be. So is it I, like I, intestine like twenty five meters or something? Twenty five feet? What is it? Uh, well, I know that the uh the small intestine is actually the longer one. And the large intestine is the shorter one. It's just like a diameter thing, I think is what they say. But it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. I don't know exactly how many, how long it is, but it's something crazy. But yeah, so most most people's appendix curves forward and touches the abdomen wall. And when they get appendectomy or get appendicitis, that's how you know because it, it hurts. Oh, I've gotten it. It sucks mine curved back behind my intestines so they had to take out several inches of intestines and uh and so my poops have never really been the same and so now like if i i don't know like i had a coffee this morning and it was like i don't know it was like 30 minutes after i got to work it was like all right this is like an emergency like mm-hmm. you you got that's pretty normal that's coffee that yeah that happens to me the other annoying habit. Oh, first we were both wrong and right at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, the small intestine is the longer one, and it's twenty three feet. So I okay. was half, half and half. Um, and the long or the big, the large intestine um, is is called large because it's wider in diameter. Right. And it's only about five feet, one and a half meters. Right. So. so it sounds to me like I was completely right. Basically, we know exactly what we're talking about at all times. <laughs> yeah. Between between the two of us, we come up with some half decent ideas every day. Exactly. Now and again. Um, so the last habit that I'll, I'll give you, Lacey, um, is when Allie and I cuddle. Mm. I usually I, I'm not always big spoon, but we kind of split it fifty fifty. I prefer being little spoon, but we usually start snuggling by me being big spoon, and Allie doesn't like the weight of my arm like right over top of her, so I have to like kind of rest it on my hip and then my hand kind of on her hip to like right. balance the weight, which is right. really uncomfortable and it drives me fucking nuts. Um, but I uh, I twitch in my sleep. So mm-hmm. I she calls it tappy taps. And when I'm falling asleep or when I'm sleeping, I just like, almost like I'm playing the piano with my right hand. <laughs> and and because she's really like touch sensitive, it drives her absolutely wild. And she like, uh. I feel bad. So like now I, I sometimes do it. And I make a fist and I rest my fist on her hip to like try uh-huh. and like control. But then apparently I like try and like I half open my fist like I'm a little alien clam like <laughs> rubbing on her leg. <laughs> That's wild, dude. Yeah, I don't I don't know, man. TBIs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the TBI strikes again, man. It strikes again, baby. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that one drives Allie absolutely nuts. And it sucks because I love snuggling and she's like not a huge snuggler at night. Yeah. So when, when she does like accept them, I'm like, yes, I'm so happy. And then as right as I fall asleep, I go tappy tap tap. Right. And then she like throws my arm across the room. Um, <laughs> he wakes you up in the middle of the night. Basically. A flying arm. There's a lot of dents in our drywall from her just <laughs> hip tossing me out of the bed. And tappy taps. <laughs> love it, dude. <laughs> um, one thing and it's not it's it's more of a gripe on my wife she's got like the the as far as temperature goes she's like the hottest temperature person ever oh really yeah so she's a hot box so like oh it just like cooks you out yeah half the time i'm like i i got a good 10 15 minutes maybe and then i'm like all right you got to do your own thing because i'm sweating y'all need to move up north you'll fit in great yeah, I'll just sleep outside. See, that's that's how I get Allie to snuggle is I keep the house freezing cold so she has to do it out of survival. <laughs> <laughs> She's always like, Not is the desire. window open? Is the heat off? Is the fan on? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Snuggle <laughs> me for survival. <laughs> I uh, I actually prefer a fan on at all times of the year. Yeah, okay. I, I like the yeah. noise a lot. Honestly, I I like a little uh, bit of white noise. Honestly. I like I like the noise, but I also like the ability to just like toss a foot out of my blankets, and mm-hmm. if I get that's, too hot, that's how and monsters cool get you, Zach. You should know this. I ain't worried about it, dude. 
The only thing that's safe outside of your blankets is your head. And I don't know why that makes sense at all, uh, <laughs> but it's true. Uh, so I have a similar, similar uh, frustration with Al. Um, mm-hmm. So she likes to absorb all of the heat. But when I'm cold, she ain't giving any of that back. Really? Oh, fuck no. If I, if I come to bed and like I was outside doing something and I'm cold and I crawl into bed and try and snuggle her, she's like, no. You're too cold. Not happening. This is my heat. <laughs> like, I give you heat so all you, the time. Yeah. So you got to, like, do a little bit of, like, warming up uh, under the blankets for a bit before you can even think about getting in for a little bit of snow. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Or I got to bring, like, a heat ba- a heat bean bag with me that's warm. And... <laughs> bean bag. Okay. Yeah, man. I got a magic bag. Oh, you, like the kind you throw in the microwave or whatever? Yeah, yeah, for, yeah, 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 yeah. It has like little plastic beads, except there's a little hole. So now it, that's another thing. Oh, a lot of bedroom related issues today. Yeah. Um, I bring that beanbag with me everywhere because of my neck and back issues. And it's either yeah. cold or really hot. And I like bringing it into the bed. But there's right. a little hole in it because I've had it for 10 years. Right. So it just spews like little little beads all <laughs> over our bed. <laughs> <laughs> Don't care to sew it up. Don't care to patch it. Ah, fuck it. We're committed. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, so uh, yeah, that was that was fairly detailed. I think we did good uh, on that for the most part. Yeah. Well, and if you didn't like what was said, Lacey, then you should come back on the podcast and we can sort of hash mm-hmm. it all back up. Shout out. Um, you want to keep going with some uh, some listener questions, dude? And yeah. You're. By the way, I posted on social media, and you got more of a response on your own personal instagram than i did on the jumbled instagram so uh that's all, fine all those jumble heads are just coming over to me personally now the, yeah they they must like uh they must like what you got going on uh granted some of the comments are quite ridiculous um so i don't know if we'll get to all of them <laughs> but uh we'll go to our dear friends at 3310 and frank and his question is, what mythical creature brought to life would improve the world? And I have a very simple answer to this. Ready? Yeah. God. <laughs> dude, there go half our listeners. Like all the religious ones are just like, I'm out, dude. Uh, I'm out. I got a good, it. I got a good segue for this, by the way. Uh, we can continue. Uh, I'll, I'll keep going with all right creatures, all jokes but... aside to to our <laughs> listeners i am not religious but i would like to be sure and in order for me to be i would just like some proof some real proof sure and sure. if god exists or jesus or buddha or whatever you whatever god i don't care they're right. all the same to me why why would you not just like make yourself present and say, yo, humans, quit being pieces of shit so you can come hang out with me up in this sweet place when you die. Like, just yeah. be a good person. That would change the fucking world. And it's yeah, true. like, oh, you have freedom and free choice or whatever. And like, well, that's fucking bullshit. We clearly can't handle that kind of responsibility right. and need some fucking handholding from God, guidance, whatever we need. And yeah. uh, come and fix our shit, God. That's yeah. what I want. Come and I'll- fix our shit. I'll pray to you every day. Exactly. All I'm going to say is, you know, if there is a God, don't come hovering down over top of America because you're going to get all the crazy rednecks and whatnot just firing at you. Well, he's so, God. He, like, that's not going to matter. Yeah, he's but maybe he's, maybe he's back in Jesus form. You know, maybe it's Jesus re- coming again, except this time he's not killed by the Romans. He's killed by a bunch of crazy rednecks who are just shooting. I mean, that's basically the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> sort of true. It's sort of true. Uh, but i think that's a legitimate answer to that question if you ask me um yeah yeah outside of that if i had to pick a more traditionally considered mythical creature yeah um i'm gonna say godzilla godzilla would be a good one do you think that would bring that would be a positive thing for the world yeah i mean have you seen the the movies Well, have you seen the newest one where we become like Godzilla's pet and he defends us because he cares about us because we're just like little peons? I actually like... didn't see the newest Godzilla, the one that okay, just well, came out this summer. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be yeah, completely honest. Spoiler alert! I don't remember everything I watched in that movie for a variety of reasons. But that was the basic idea of what I remember. So, uh, so yeah, Godzilla comes. I think that would give us, like humans, like round mm-hmm. one with Godzilla where we're trying to fight him. Right. It's going to make us realize, hey, maybe I shouldn't be so petty with my other friends because this giant dinosaur breathing fire electricity shit is going to eat us all. Right. So that would make us band together, mm-hmm. which is good. And then mm-hmm. later, when we become his pets, we realize, hey, we're not that important or powerful. Maybe we should just, you know, chill the fuck out, put our egos on a shelf, and, and right. work together to make the best out of this situation before this fucking dinosaur sees us mis- like, misbehaving and come and fucking stomps all over us. Yeah, 100%. I'm yeah. with you, dude. Here's mine. Are you ready for this? Mm-hmm. You know, try as he may while he was still alive, Bob Barker really tried to control the pet population, okay? <laughs> he really did. He really tried. And he he, he, he gave said an honest every, effort. That was what an interesting every, life cause. Every man. day. Every day. Spay and neuter your you know, Saturdays and Sundays, I'm sure he was on the corner t- telling somebody to go street have their, sign yep. in Hollywood pretending yep. to be Bob Barker when he's he still had Bob Barker. He still had the little microphone for some reason. <laughs> the, little, the little stem microphone. It's not hooked up to anything. This is like later in his life he would do that. All right, hold up a second. Let's talk about our sponsor for today's podcast, Audible. Head over to audibletrial.com slash jumbled and get your free 30-day trial and a free audiobook. Guys, how did this happen already? It's already August. Uh, we've crept into my birthday month. Uh, which, by the way, August 14th, if you guys really care at all, that's going to be, uh, I think it'll be the day before uh, episode 128. So send me some love. But we're going to send you some love by giving you this offer for Audible. The book that we are going to, the audiobook rather, that we're going to be uh, talking about this month is called Comedy Sex God by Pete Holmes. Now, if you don't know Pete Holmes, he's a comedian, stand-up comedian, very, very funny. Uh, so this uh, this book talks about uh, Pete's life. He grew up uh, evangelical Christ- a Christian right outside of Boston, Massachusetts. And so he didn't uh, do drugs or alcohol or premarital sex, anything like that. Um so he sort of he's, he lived his life pretty straight laced uh, growing up. Uh, in his older years, he has uh, he's moved to a post spiritual life, post religion life rather. Um, and, and this book sort of just talks about his uh, his trials, his I mean things that he's learned through his life, and in these uh, two very different realities that he finds himself living in: the one that he used to live in, the one that he currently lives in. I think it's sort of an examination of uh, of what we all sort of deal with, right? We all uh, are led to believe the world a certain way. You grow up, you get a little bit, maybe a little bit jaded. You get a little bit uh, wise to how the world works. And uh, suddenly the, the world's a different place. So this is uh, that, that take from the perspective of Pete Holmes. Sounds like a very interesting audiobook. I've not given a listen yet, but I do have a credit for this month, and you better believe I'm picking that one up. So why don't you guys go on the journey with me? Pick that one up. Let me know what you think about it. Uh, if you don't want to pick that one up, Audible's got over 180,000 other titles for you to choose from. So you're going to find something that you really, really enjoy, and we're happy that you're going to find that for yourself. Uh, but please head over to audibletrial.com jumbled, and hey, Love you guys. Uh, but try as he may, I don't think there were some people that were spaying and neutering their cats. So, here's who we bring. Mythical creature. His name is Alf. The alien from outer space. He had a, he had a TV show in the 90s or the I 80s. I remember what he looks like, but I don't re- I remember watching it as a kid, but I don't remember and he, anything about that. He show. ate cats. That's what he ate? He ate cats. Yeah. Wow. That is fucked up. So, and we do have a bit of a cat problem. Have you heard of Cat Island? 
It's in Japan. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Cats. So Cat Island. I don't really you, care. For you just cats. Un, you unleash Alf on Cat Island, dude. It's pandemonium. All the cats. Yeah, and that's don't... how you get Godzilla-sized Alf. Yeah, and maybe then we he can was go... like a puppet, right? Yeah, but you know what? He's gonna be like the real version of Alf. It's gonna be. It's gonna be the. It's gonna be like the realistic version of Alf. And was then, he a good guy? I don't remember. Yeah, I, I mean, he, he spoke English, and he's like a buddy or whatever. He's like an alien that a family just kept at their house. Was he an alien? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he an, ate he's an alien. Have you not seen Alf? Have you not looked at a picture of Alf before? I know what he looks like, but maybe he was some weird, like, creature. I don't know. Maybe he's like yeah. a Sesame Street thing. Yeah, I mean, he's, he, he... To be fair, he was made out of felt. Okay, let's just get that yeah. out of the way. So he could have been whatever. But he had like a very distinct face. Didn't look like really anything specifically. Yeah, he got a weird nose. Very weird nose. So it looked like uh, almost like a weird relative of Gonzo is what I mm, like to that, think. That is exactly it. Yeah. So so you you just unleash unleash Alf on the on the cat populace, and then really avenge Bob Barker. Yeah, and then we get Alf and Godzilla. To just protect the uh, protect the earth, you know. Yeah, from from ourselves. From ourselves and from uh, you know, from any potential visitors that might seek to do us harm in the future. That is. But I mean, that is fair. but but the space force should have that under control, right? Well, you you would think so. <laughs> Um, I'm still figuring out how Space I can be Force. a gunner on Space Force plane thing. Yeah, I don't Spaceship. know. I I think that would be the absolute <laughs> coolest job, just shooting lasers in space on the side. Dude, yeah. Boop, 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 boop. I saw uh in my my history uh you know on Facebook it shows like your past posts and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. There was a it was like a speech that Mike Pence was giving to some like reporters or something about about the space force this is right after trump made that comment and they put the halo theme music behind it and it made me so happy oh yeah i remember it was so epic and it made me hyped you, up for space force dude i bet you trump like saw an advertisement for halo <laughs> somewhere and thought it was not a video game and that it was like another country like creating space force he was like no we gotta do this guys we gotta do it <laughs> yep uh that's absolutely incredible and great great little bit there zach i appreciate that thank you um so i know you said i get a lot of i got a lot of responses sure i had a lot that were talk about me uh, uh so i'm gonna give a quick shout out to uh tanisha who is one of our most loyal listeners and fans, Aaron, who complains about your squeaky chair, which you haven't had a squeaky chair, so thank you. Um, That's his girlfriend. And then our previous fact checker who just fucking disappeared on us, Mike. Uh, (laughs) Shout out to you for being a piece of shit. Where is he living now? Wasn't he on vacation and he just never came back or something like that? Mike loves vacation. Um, he's always up to something. Uh, I actually saw him. We watched Godzilla together. So oh, okay. a couple of weeks ago he was, he was in town. Yeah. I hadn't heard about him since he went to like Puerto Rico or whatever it was. <laughs> Portugal. Yeah. Goober. Was it Portugal? And he was started yeah, he with was a in, P. He was in Portugal for a while and he's always doing something fun- funky. Um, my little sister Larissa said how much cooler younger sisters are than their older brothers. And I had, a, mm. you know, a couple of days to think about my response to this. And I was putting something together. And then she posted this video on Instagram of her playing a song that her and I wrote like 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And I have to admit, she's pretty fucking cool. So whatever, you win. I'm only going to say it once. You're cooler than me. Congratulations. Well, but now, but now you said it on a platform where she can just put that little snippet on repeat. Yeah. Every time she sees you. And guess what? This podcast episode is her Christmas and birthday gift because they're back to back for the rest of her life. Oh wow. Okay. You know what? That's a good that's a good bargain, dude. You never have to spend any money ever again. That's great. I'm gonna I'm gonna take this episode, I'm gonna cut out that like ten seconds, I'm gonna put it on a CD, yeah, I'm gonna give it to her 
every celebrate celebratory event in her life that's what that's my present to her yeah she's just gonna have like 40 cds by the end by the end when it's all said and done just so many so many no, discs I'm, that I'm she gonna, can't even I'm play get them anymore reprinted and i'm gonna put them in like a mail house and just have them auto ship so <laughs> like even when i'm dead she's gonna keep getting them and be like god damn it <laughs> but that'll probably be a great thing at the end you know once you're gone yeah, and until like she has hundreds of CDs stacked up in her house because she can't get yeah. rid of them because she's too sentimental. Right. I win. You should just add something stupid onto the end of each CD, though. Ooh, like a different one-liner. All yeah, right. yeah, yeah. All right, I gotta, I gotta hit the studio and figure this out. <laughs> um, so one of the questions that we have to talk about, and I don't know how much you're gonna care about this, but it's World of Warcraft. You know, I'm not, I, I don't have any experience playing WoW, so. Well, good news for you. Do you want to have experience playing WoW? I mean, you've talked about your experience playing WoW and how it reeled you in and how you got completely. I'm fiending against Completely I addicted. It. I need it. <clears throat> I, I think I'm good. Ah, uh, Zach, come on. I'm thinking, Anyways. I'm thinking about getting, get going hard on Minecraft. That's the popular thing. Minecraft is 100% a game for you, Captain Tedious. Um, So we'll get to that. World of Warcraft, Blizzard, 15 years later. Mm -hmm. I still am addicted to this game 15 years later. Yeah. yeah. Granted, I haven't played in roughly six years. Still addicted. They are re releasing Vanilla WoW. So, the original World of Warcraft. Right. As it was, they made a couple buffs and like made the graphics better. Yeah, remastered They're, it. They remastered it. A little bit of changes, but keeping it as hard as and, and tedious and grueling as it was. Right. They're re-releasing it, and I'm so excited about it. You know, the one thing about WoW that I am thankful for is it gave birth to the the whole Leroy Jenkins. Exactly. Thing. And that and that's one thing that. I regularly, every once in a while, I'll just bust into somewhere just if screaming Leroy knew. Jenkins. If you only you actually, if you did that instance and you knew what, like how ridiculous that was and how infuriating it is when that help it happens, when those whelps, <laughs> if someone pulls too many whelps and they auto pull like everything and you like wipe your team, the 10 man team that you spend hours putting together right. because there's no like auto group function. So you're sitting in a main city, like spamming, like looking for one tank, like <laughs> yeah. this instance. And then somewhere Adam do be like, yo, I'll tank for you. You're like, all right, party in. You can spend like two hours putting this group together. Uh-huh. And that's near the, like the end ish of that dungeon. And then someone does that and kills everyone. And everyone's like, ah, oh, fuck it. I don't care anymore. And then they leave. <laughs> and you're just like, no, no, <laughs> Uh, I would be so pissed just so the fact that, that I wasted so much time. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. But at the same time, you're just so into that game. In in my peak, in my peak. So I like literally had to like go through a conscious effort. And I think I, I want to take credit for my own willpower. But the reality is that graceland's internet was just so fucking brutal that i couldn't play it yeah but i had to quit when i got to university because it was so bad like i would literally go to work and all i would do was work i would work and then i would go to like i'd maybe go to band practice and then i would play wow until like three in the morning and then i'd get up at seven and i'd go to work and then i'd like maybe go to band practice and then i'd come home and i would like play wow nonstop. it was so bad that Greg has a great story that one time him and our other friend Kyle came to visit me in Calgary mm-hmm. and uh, I was preparing for a raid. Um, so you had to like do a lot of farming, basically just like getting mats, materials that you needed for like potions and buffs and stuff. Yeah. I needed gold to cover repair costs. And uh, they came over and I made them play like nonstop <laughs> farming for me. <laughs> So we had this awesome system where we would do rotations where two of us would play Gears of War together and the mm-hmm. third would have to play WoW. And then we would just like rotate. <laughs> oh, so horrible. Um, so shout out to Greg for being a great friend and putting up with that addiction. Yeah. Um, but uh, 
But yeah, I'm real excited and but also kind of annoyed because l- earlier this week they also announced that they were going to re-release in one to two years the first expansion, mm-hmm. um, which I really was against because I, just adding expansions is what ruined the game for me. So on one hand, I'm grateful because it made me not want to play. But essentially the expansion just wasn't new content. It was like you had to re-level. Mm. But if you go to like – so an instance – that you needed, you know, 40 people to do at level 60. When you were level 70, you only needed like 10. So no one did them. So you lost all that historical content every time they did it. And they kept putting out new expansions every few years. And I hate leveling. Hated it. I just cared about end game content. Right. Um, so that's what really pushed me out. So they were like, yeah, in a year or two, we'll, we'll re-release the first expansion. And the internet fucking went crazy. It was like, no, you're not. Like, the purpose of Vanilla WoW was to like maintain the best part of it mm-hmm. don't just re-release and resell us the same game that you've been giving us for the last 15 years like come on and then like within two days they they turned they were like uh actually after careful review uh we're not going to do this well that's good so what they what i'm hoping what i'm praying like they have a lot of vanilla content to release like there's phases and instances that were locked until they like at level 60 is that they could just add new content at that level cap so that you still maintain all that historical yeah. stuff. Because, like, my my guild... Oh, God, this is super nerdy. We're going to lose listeners or gain a lot on this week's episode <laughs> of World of Warcraft podcast. <laughs> um, so in on my server, my guild was one of the first guilds to take down this, like, mega box boss, and it was, like, a 40-man... You needed 40 people put together to, to take, take this down. Mm-hmm. And, like, there's so much effort and pride. And, like, when that instance first released, no one knew the strategies or what you had to do or what the monsters did. So, like, you died a lot. Right. Until you, like, kind of figured out, oh, we need, like, healers to stand here and we need this many mages to handle this. So, you put so much effort and then one, like, one um, expansion comes out and all of that is, like, deleted Mm. and just, like, gone. So, like, years of work just obliterated out of greed so it was really fucking frustrating which is also why i only played for a few expansions and then got out of it yeah and as you can tell i'm fully addicted to wow based on that eight and a half minute ramble about Eh. how addicted i am to wow and very upset about (laughs) i'm not gonna lie zach there's a there's a really good chance that 300 pound johnny's coming back and (laughs) that i'm gonna be like single and like living on the streets with my iMac and like an umbrella and like a diesel generator, stealing <laughs> stealing Starbucks Wi-Fi and playing WoW. Yeah, but I'll be decked out as shit. Yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna be just uh, you're gonna be panhandling for a little bit of spare change so that you can pay your Sprint bill or whatever the fuck. Well, no, I'm stealing stealing Starbucks Wi-Fi, but I'll need to make at least twenty bucks a month to pay the fee to play WoW. So. Well, yeah, and and for diesel fuel, apparently you'll have to. Yeah, yeah, but you can siphon that real easy. <laughs> yeah, just find out where. Just do it like next to a Starbucks that's also sort of close to where trucks just stop. Uh, yeah, 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 because those t- those tanks are pretty yeah. accessible. Yeah, and yeah, absolutely. You just a little, little tap a little hole and just fill up a can. You're good to go. <laughs> good to go, man. Good to go. Maybe we'll just set up camp there because they don't have access to pancakes. Ooh. And truckers get lonely, if you know what I mean. If you need a little extra cash. Yeah, you give <laughs> give up your hole or something like that if you need to get a little extra. <laughs> I'm a little short um, on my money this month. I got to pay my wow fee. Here's my, there's, here's my hole. There's here's my back be... door. And then on your ass cheeks, <laughs> one, there, wow. one ass cheek says M. The other ass cheek says M. But then you do an up, you do the the handstand, and it it says "Wow" right on your ass. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, there's got to be a bit about that, but if not, I wish I wish I could act, and we can make it. Uh, bullseye on your asshole. Bullseye. Nailed it. <laughs> oh shit, dude! All right, I would Zach, almost what pay did you good... want to talk about? I don't I've know. I've talked about way too much shit. I would almost pay good money to see that whole scenario pan out but then you like you still have everything like you just sort of go out for a couple months try to make it out in the wild 
surfing off Starbucks <laughs> Wi-Fi and the diesel Dude, generator. Let's I make would... a documentary. This is how we're gonna become rich. We're gonna make a documentary called Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Wow. wow. And it's just going to be Owen Wilson narrating the the rise and fall, the rise of my wow life, the fall of my personal life. <laughs> oh. But but then the comeback story through facing addiction and adversity and then yeah. getting clean again. I love it, dude. We're going to be rich. <laughs> we are going to be 100% rich. Um, things that I had to talk about, they're sort of just, uh, random things and I could bring it back up, but I think I might hold on to this one cause we're a little bit removed from the whole God stuff. So I'm not going to try to shove that in there. Maybe another time. We should um, get into another good philosophical conversation at some point. We haven't had sure. one of those in a while. No, we haven't. Uh, did I talk about my, uh, our Strange addiction? Nope. Hour and 20 minute, uh, Uber ride. No, please share. That sounds oh my horrendous. F- fucking god. So sometimes sometimes you just run into some real nutballs or fucking people who just don't understand that my time is my money, you know. When you dr- when you're driving specifically. So But if you're still driving them, aren't you get is it doesn't the rate just keep going up? It, no. The rate the rate is stuck where it was. Um so you get a flat rate depending on if they were in a uh like a heavy populated area that you know if there was surge pricing or stuff like that there's a lot of different variables but when i jesus this was my first ride of the night right so i'm i'm driving i think i'm getting i'm heading to i'm always heading towards downtown kansas city because that's like the center where i'm Mm -hmm. where where most people need the rides on the weekend so i'm headed towards that way i get a uh, I get a a ride come through 13 minutes away, and it's uh, in Independence, which is, you know, I have I'm already in Independence. I just had to hop off the hop off the highway, take back roads to get to them. So I get there, pick them up, and I start driving, and the the fare is a, it's going to be like a 30 minute ride, and I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. great, you know, that's actually going to be worth my time. I'm taking them to Kansas. You know, this is at least going to be $20 in my pocket that, you know, it's a good way to start the night. Um, Because I shoot, I try to shoot for $30 an hour. If I can make $30 an hour, that's a good night, you know. Um, So anyway, I start driving and the girl stops me. She's like, oh, we need to make a stop at at this grocery store just up here. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. Thinking, hey, these people probably just need to make a quick stop. Right. That yeah, would that would like be what grab and mix or something. Right. That would be what a reasonable person would do. So I, I pull up, I park uh in between like a, a Dollar General and the Sunfresh Market, supermarket. And I'm like, okay, guy has to go in Sunfresh, the girl goes in a Dollar General. She leaves her purse in my car. Okay, she takes her wallet out, leaves her purse. So now they've anchored me. Yeah. They've completely anchored. Because what am I going to do? That was strategic, one hundred percent. Right. Because what am I going to do? Take the take the purse out and set it on the ground and then just drive away? No, I'm going to the store and be like, "Yo, take this. I'm out of here." I mean, I could have done that. I definitely could have done that. But then I leave my car open to the dude to come out, you know. And I so I'm just like, whatever. Hopefully they're not going to be long. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there. Ten minutes goes by. The girl comes out. Right. And she got everything she needed from Dollar General. So she's sitting in the back. I'm like trying to look at things on the internet to try try to pass time because I'm just sort of getting a little angry now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because it's already been 10 minutes, uh, 10 to 15, somewhere in there. And so another 10 to 15 goes by and the guy comes out of Sunfresh Supermarket. So right there. So he's in there for almost 30 minutes. 25, 30 minutes. And he comes out with a full cart of groceries. So he ha- he did his entire grocery sh- grocery shopping and made me wait through it. You know, most people would be like, okay. Drop me off we're, and call another yeah, one. Yeah, drop you off and then we'll come uh, have another person come get us, take us home, whatever. So at this point, I'm just, I'm, I'm angry, you know, so... 
the guy ho- or I pop my trunk so the guy can put the groceries in the trunk, whatever. And then I start to drive towards the destination, and the girl's like, "Oh, we need to take the guy, t- take him back to the house," which is literally just two down, two mi- two, mi- <clears throat> sorry, two minutes down the road from where I picked them up at. So I I spent thirty minutes to take this dude to the supermarket, which is two minutes down the road, to wait on him to take him back, and then uh, the girl's still like, "I I still need to go to my my destination though." I'm like, "Okay." At least there's some kind of money in this, you know, at mm-hmm. least something. I've already spent, you know, 30 minutes, 35 minutes at this point on these people. Well, more oh. than that, because it took me 13 minutes to get to them. So yeah. if I'm adding that in, I'm already upwards of, you know, 45 minutes. Hour, yeah. yeah. So take them back, takes them another four minutes or so to unload the stuff from my trunk. And then uh, the girl hops back in. And I start to drive, and she's like, hold on. She makes me stop. I sit there for maybe a minute while she's trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, and she's she just put, sits her phone down, and her phone just died. And she's like, I actually don't think we're going to make it to the destination I'm wanting to go to originally um, in time. It's going to close. The place is going to close. And I'm like, okay, so where do you need to go? She's like, I just need to go to the other side of Independence. It's like 10 to 15 minutes, you know? So it cuts my cuts that in half, that distance in half. So I, she tells me where she needs to go. Now I'm not even focused. Uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm like, okay, I know where that is. So I'm just going based on memory right now. So I start driving there. At this point, I've just pretty much called it a night. So I just want to get this person to their to their destination and Mm -hmm. as quickly as possible. And so, and also try to at least scrape like a tip or something out of this, like just something. And so I'm driving and I get off the exit close to where she needs to be dropped off at. And she's like, would you mind if we make a stop at Walmart? Now there were plenty of times where I should have just said, fuck no, like just no, we're done. But the night was ruined at this point. Like, the, I the, I wasn't going to make any money anyway now. So I'm just like, whatever, we'll just extend the ride for however long this takes. So I drop her off at Walmart, and I wait ten more minutes on this on this chick. She gets whatever she needs. Did she leave her purse again? Uh, I think so. I don't even remember. I, I, I feel was, like that was like she knew what she was doing. Yeah, I'm, I'm blood red angry at this, at this point. And so... I drop her off. I wait 10 minutes. She comes back out. She's like trying to offer me whatever kind of bullshit she just bought and like some food or something. I'm like, no, I don't. I'm fine. So I drive her five minutes down the road, drop her off. All in all, one hour, 20 minutes that I spent from traveling to the, to this person, to taking them to the supermarket back to, to her destination after Walmart hour and 20 minutes and uh here's here's the real kicker okay you ready for this yeah no tip no tip and here's how much i made twenty dollars oh my god can you wait wait first question twenty dollars two zero so we already know this this person is quite insane how on a scale of one to ten how hot is she she was moderately attractive. So she just like entitled. Was this like an entitled thing? Well, I, she was a specific type of person. Uh, she's a white girl with with like cornrows. So I don't know oh. what that means, but she was like a. I don't know yeah. what kind of person that would be, but <laughs> she was like right away. I was like getting a feel that this girl was like. Did she show you her boobs at least? Nope, none of that. Would that have made it better? Yes. <laughs> can you report this to Uber? Like, there's got to be something you can say about this. Like, to I gave a bad, this... I gave a bad rating. I mean, yeah, that's all you... you can do. But someone like so leaving the purse and the back and forth, right. and like right. this is. I bet you she's done this before. Probably, and I if I had to make a guess, what rating did you give her? I gave her one star. Okay, good. I was gonna say if you gave her like three, I, I would have 
smack too silly. No, she got a one star rating. Um, do you get to put in why? Like you get to type a little bit, right? No, no. Uh, so I feel like I gave a driver a bad rating, and then it said why, and then I got to type in like a few. Uh, well, words. you gave the driver a bad rating. Yeah, I was just I. They're like, okay, give a rating, and you give the rating. And then, Man, I would still I would contact Uber and share this story and say like yeah. this is exploitation. Yeah, your drivers and it's been a couple weeks now, but yeah, but they have the data, right? Right. I might. I don't know. I or, was or you just you if you still have her address next time in town, we'll just go and egg her house. <laughs> I I think I recall where I think I recall where it is. So oh, that's uh. That's brutal. Um, yeah, it was bad. And then there was only one more ride, and it was people f- that I picked up from uh, Massachusetts. So they had a super cute accent, which made that's the kind of nice. Which made the night a little bit better, moderately better. So you made basically American minimum wage. Yeah, I made twenty seven dollars for two hours of work, pretty much. Which isn't minimum wage. I mean, it's better than minimum yeah, yeah, wage. That's for fair. America, but. And that's based, well, it's not America, it, it, there's not a standard for minimum oh, wage, I don't think, in America, it's based on the state. I think the states dictate Yeah, yeah, yeah what, what minimum wage is. Um, that's real unfortunate. Uh, yeah. So next time I'm in town, I'm going to just constantly book Ubers until I get you. Okay. And I like this idea. I'm going to take an upper decker in in the Acura. <laughs> what uh, What does that involve? What What is an upper decker in an Acura? Well, you know what an upper decker is, right? Sure, it's where you take a shit in the in the tank of the toilet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll be in the back seat, and you're gonna shit in my like... back window. Yeah, yeah. Back up in there. <laughs> you just press your ass up in that little. There's speakers up there, dude. So you want to maybe not well, get you crank it in my that mesh, base and you'll get it. You'll get like all kinds of. Uh... Yeah. Maybe don't get it in the mesh. That's all I ask. No, no. Okay. Well, that's maybe a reasonable. Can you just like put uh, wax paper down or something like that? I mean. No, that completely defeats the purpose. I'm going to get a burner well, phone, a Kansas City burner <laughs> phone, a I've, fresh Uber account. <laughs> you're going to be my first ride. I'm going to pick you up and you're going to be like Pablo or something. Your name's going to be completely Ooh. opposite. Yeah, I'll, I'll have a fake mustache on, googly eye glasses. I won't recognize you at all. Hair slicked right back. Right. I'm going to be like, there's no way. I'll put like a fat suit on like they made Chris Hemsworth wear yeah. in Thor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or in uh, Endgame. Yeah, I'm going to be like, hey, you know, you look sort of familiar. You look like somebody I know. You're going to have to work on it. You're going to have to work on a voice or something. Yeah, I was just thinking, I'm, I, well, I can't I can't experiment now because I don't want you to get any hints. Sure, sure. I, I, I'm a master of disguise, okay? Are you? Great movie. <laughs> that <laughs> is it, though? <laughs> Is it though, Johnny? I'm sort of judging you if that's. We're talking about if that's it right great now, movie. 20 years later, and we're both laughing. That is. I'm not laughing about the movie. I'm laughing that you called it the greatest <laughs> movie, or a great movie. A great movie, not the greatest up there. I would say maybe top five of our generation. <laughs> no, Johnny, no. <laughs> Goes. Oh, master. Legends of, of the Fall. Uh, Last of the Mohicans. Uh-huh. Master of Disguise. <laughs> Number three gets bronze. <laughs> Rush Hour 2. Dana Carvey in a turtle outfit gets... Endgame. <laughs> <laughs> Dana Carvey in a turtle outfit pulls in the bronze, dude. <laughs> you know what? He was turtly enough, dude. Uh, he was he absolutely was. turtly enough. Uh, all right, I don't know where we can go from there, so let's wrap this thing no, up before I say something else stupid. We're good, man. We're we've hit our fifty-five minutes. When this is all said and done, we'll be pushing an hour. We're good. Uh, this has been a fun one, Johnny. We really we really got in our groove there at the end. Oh, that was that was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Master of disguise. You're a piece of shit. Hey guys, if you. <laughs> If you, if you guys want to send us an email, that'd be uh, jumbledpodcast at gmail.com or johnny.jumbled at gmail.com. Feel free to tell him that he's fucking wrong about that master in disguise uh, bit there. Uh. <laughs> um, uh, find us on all social media at jumbledpodcast. 
Uh, leave a rating and a review, five star rating and a review, please, on iTunes. Helps out a lot. Uh, head over to audibletrial.com slash jumbled. Check out Audible services. See, pick out a book. You get one, you get a free one, and you're welcome from Jumbled. And if you want to, please head over to uh, patreon.com slash jumbled. Pay $500, get us an address. Johnny is staring off in the distance. I have no idea what he's thinking about, but it looks really insane. I'm thinking he's he's really executing this upper decker theory in his brain. So <laughs> I've I'm got so- it all sorted out. Okay, perfect. Um, and that's, that's gonna do it. Oh, share the podcast, uh, share the podcast with everybody, everybody, you know, everybody you care about, everybody you don't care about. I don't care. Um, use it as punishment as well. We're okay with that. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh, point them to number 36. I think that was my first solo podcast. That was a train wreck. (laughs) Anyway, um, let's see, share the podcast. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Thanks for coming back. And be sure to come back next week for another episode of Jumbled, your favorite podcast. About personal details about us that you didn't care to know. No. (laughs) Nobody asked for this. I didn't even ask for this. Okay, we'll see you later.